I'm Joe Lample. When I created Growing a Greener World, I had one goal, to tell stories of everyday people, innovators, entrepreneurs, forward-thinking leaders, who are all, in ways both big and small, dedicated to organic gardening and farming, lightening our footprint, conserving vital resources, protecting natural habitats, making a tangible difference for us all. They're real, they're passionate, they're all around us. They're the game changers who are literally growing a greener world and inspiring the rest of us to do the same. Growing a greener world, it's more than a movement, it's our mission. People garden for a lot of reasons, to enhance the look and value of their home, to grow food and connect with nature, and to create intimate and relaxing areas. But plenty of people think you need a lot of room to do that, but the fact is, you don't. You can create great green spaces with very few feet, even if you have no soil to plant in. But the trick is, there are a few things you need to know to get the best results. Susan Morrison and Rebecca Sweet are two garden designers working near San Francisco, California. They're experts at packing a lot of punch into a small gardening space. In fact, they co-authored a book on the subject. They believe that any garden, large or small, can benefit from using just a few basic design techniques on a much smaller scale. Small space gardening is a concept that anybody can use, whether you have a small garden or a large garden or no garden, even if you have a balcony or a courtyard. Everybody has those awkward spaces, whether they're along a fence line, or a patio, or a side yard, that are small and difficult in which to create a garden. I think there's a perception that you can't do a lot in a small space, but in fact, you can do just about anything that you can do in a large garden, including grow vegetables, uh, even some fruit trees will work in a small space. And because the area is already intimate, if you like to garden, if you're a plant collector, then you're really able to appreciate those plants in an up-close and personal way. With some creative layering techniques, where you layer up instead of out, you can create such a lush garden in just a foot or two. You can use airy plants that are tall and see-through, and those types of techniques really visually trick the eye and it makes you think that the bed is deeper than it actually is and you can really create whatever type of garden you want. You can have a lush perennial garden, you can have just vegetable garden. The point is don't give up. A lot of my clients have smaller gardens and a common situation that we run into are long narrow planting beds. When it's a traditional garden, the typical go-to solution is to plant out. But if you've got a small narrow bed, you have to rethink that, and instead the solution is to plant up. And what that means is thinking of your narrow space in three layers. On the top layer, you want to focus on vining plants, on small trees, or on any sort of a shrub that can be trained into a vase shape or that grows that way naturally. And that's what's going to give you color and height in the back of the bed. The middle layer is the one that we really think of as being the most important layer, and that's where you're going to want to focus on plants that are three or four feet tall and have an open and airy habit. The reason this layer is so important is because of the way our eyes perceive depth. If we can see two or three things in a space where there really should only be room for one, it gives the impression that the space is bigger than it is. And that just gives the garden an overall more lush feel. And the third layer is the bottom layer. That's the perfect spot for small mounding plants that don't get more than one or two feet tall. Foliage plants are great for the bottom layer because not only do they balance out some of the flower color higher up in your layered bed, but they're going to give you multi-season interest. And in fact, choosing plants for this layer that are evergreen or semi-evergreen is going to make your layered garden last throughout the season and throughout the year.
So as a designer, I get asked, probably with, with every new client, I get asked, what do I do with the side yard? It's such a challenging and narrow space and one that I think baffles pretty much everybody. So take my yard, for example. I have two side yards, one on either side. The problem that most people have with their side yards, including me, is that you have uneven lighting because they're narrow spaces. You have your house here, and if you have a two-story house, forget it, your side yard's in the shade almost the whole day. And another problem is these side yards need to be utilitarian. They need to lead from the front to the back. The pathways need to be wide enough. So how are you going to really create a garden in such a narrow space? So there's a lot of ways that we can solve these problems. One of which is to choose plants that naturally grow taller than they are wider. And when you choose those plants, try and pick those that have airy and delicate and fine foliage versus those that have big, kind of big hulking leaves. Because what happens is when you have a small space and you choose a plant that's big and bulky, it actually makes that small space seem even smaller. The lighter, airier area foliage opens it up and you can see beyond and it makes the space look bigger. Okay, if you're like me and you have a side yard, it's probably the last thing that you get to. But we've learned by now there's a lot of things that you can do in a small, narrow space. And this homeowner has made the most of that. They have these great raised beds on both sides, full of wonderful plants and some vertical height, and that's really important. And an easy way to do it, just add some containers there. And it doesn't hurt to have roses with great fragrance as you walk by. Then we come up on this picture window. Now it's nice, but without the window boxes, all they see is a blank wall. But with all of that color, come on, it's beautiful from inside as well as the outside. And then we walk and we see this wisteria. Can you imagine this in full bloom? But in the wintertime, because it's deciduous, there's extra sunlight going in here, which adds warmth. But in the summertime, because of the leaves, we get the shade that we need from that afternoon sun. And then we all have those garbage cans and those buckets and maybe the compost that we don't want to see all the time, but we want to get to it, right? Well, build some storage bins like this, open it up, get to it when you need it. But when you don't, it's out of the way. But in a small, narrow space like this, not only do we have function, but we have beauty too, and anybody could do that. And lastly, don't forget that you can grow plants flat along a fence by using a trellis system or an espalier system, which is just the French technique of growing trees or shrubs in intricate designs along a fence. So if you're anything like me and you don't have a lot of space, you can grow things vertically, like these trellises, or you can just adhere the planters directly to the walls of, say, your balcony or patio or your fence. Now, one way to do that, come with me, check this out, is to use these really cool pocket planters. They make an instant garden. You can put up to two one-gallon pots in this. They're modular. You can move them around anywhere you want at any given time. You can also stack them. Why? Well, this front area is porous, which means as you're watering the top one, any excess water will pour into the next one, and so on and so forth, conserving water. The back area, check this out, is lined with plastic, so wherever you put them, don't worry about the integrity of the walls. They'll be just fine. Let's recap. Really? Easy to use, inexpensive, instant garden. And if you're anything like me, that is music to your ears. So we've seen some great ideas for gardening in small spaces, but what if you had no space at all? Well, Baylor Chapman knows that dilemma all too well. She's a floral designer and green business owner in San Francisco's Mission District. My floral and garden design business is a certified green business in San Francisco. I was really looking for better ways to grow and receive flowers that were organic, and that's hard to do. So we started looking for a space to grow flowers. And again, it's a city. There are not many places to grow. There are rooftops and there are some small garden plots. And ran into a neighbor and a friend who owns a production company and has a big parking lot. So the center of the parking lot is used sometimes, but um, not so much. Sometimes there are huge trucks in here, but we thought we could use the perimeter. We could beautify the neighborhood and grow our own unique organic flowers. Some of the extra benefits that have come about because of our parking lot garden are sightings of little ladybugs, bees, and even hummingbirds. 
And another added bonus is the neighbors, because we're in, again, a very industrial neighborhood, yet um, people are stopping and looking and peering through the gate. What are you doing in there? Which is pretty fun. So I've met people across the street and behind us, the car dealership, the car repair shop, who, whom I wouldn't have met before. As you can imagine, it would take a long time to water, and in the beginning, we did hand water all of the plants. It took a long time, and some of the plants suffered because of it. So what we did is install the drip irrigation system that we set on a timer, and it's easy. Baylor's commitment to container gardening goes far beyond her parking lot garden. She utilizes containers in new and unique ways in just 500 square feet of space on her city loft. I grew up on a farm in the Midwest and I've moved uh, slowly westward and through New Mexico in the country to here. And I live in the Mission in San Francisco. And not only is it a city, but it's very urban, very urban, lots of concrete, lots of noises, lots of pollution. And so this is my place where I like to come to relax and get off the beaten path. When designing my deck space and the plants here, I really have to consider budget. Um, I do consider the environment as well, and I want to consider a unique vessel. So that leads me to various places in San Francisco. One is a scrap metal place where we go and um, check out what's there. And sometimes they save certain pieces for me. They've saved these copper panels, which are kind of, kind of fabulous. I have one as a decorative piece and one is filled with succulents that Sophie, who works with me, made me for a gift. Um, another thing we do is I go to Building Resources in San Francisco and they had these fabulous shutters. Um, that we picked up and planted our succulents in. Uh, they also had these really cool, uh, I think they're siding or they're ceiling panels from an old building. And we used them with the recycled wood or repurposed wood we got from there, these old pieces that were kind of hard to work with, but we built these planter boxes. And then we put casters on the bottom so we could move them around the studio. Then we took the panels and instead of doing them face out, we did them backwards. So the planter boxes have a little bit of texture to them. So really anybody can do this style. I think you just have to think about a container or a pitcher or a bucket, anything. Just if you can put a little soil in it, it'll work. Even the shutters that we've used. Or I go and get old grates that you can grow a vine up. If you have a small space, think about your wall. Think about going up instead of just planting on the ground. So even if you only have a small yard or patio or no soil at all, there's still room for big gardening ideas because you can nurture the environment and still create a great garden retreat for yourself by focusing on the walls and fences and even the place you park your car. That's right, and just imagine the impact if everyone planted something, both in the environment and on us. And if you want to learn more about small space gardening or the techniques used today, or watch past episodes, including Chef Nathan's cooking videos, it's all on our website. That's right, and the link is the same as our name, growingagreenerworld.com. I'm Joe Lample. And I'm Nathan Lyon. And we'll see you back here next time for more Growing a Greener World.